Hey guys, welcome back to Satisfactory Designs, where we help you build bases that your friends are jealous of. Now on today's episode, we are switching over to rotors. Yes, the standard rotor recipe is iron rods as well as screws. Now as you can see, you unlock rotors in tier 2 along with the modular frame and smart plating, which we're definitely going to need. As well as we're going to need the logistics for Mark II conveyor belts because we're going to need some iron for this. So quick little research, it's going to be uh, 20 iron rods per minute and 100 screws per minute, which the fun thing about this is screws are made from iron rods. So you're going to need a lot of iron rods for this build. Now what is that going to look like? Well, let's go over to the wonderful spreadsheet to show us. Alright guys, as we jump over here and take a look at this, uh, this is our nice little setup. Now for those who don't want to deal with the basic recipe and want some of the advanced stuff so we can build bigger and better things, stick around to the end of the video, I have a special surprise for you. But for those that are just basic and everything and want to just start off strong, you know, solid playthroughs and whatnot, uh, let's start off with the basic recipe and what that entails. So for one assembler, that's going to be iron rods and screws. You're going to need 2.5 constructors making screws from iron rods which means you're going to need three constructors making iron rods total which is 1.5 smelters now i don't like these numbers i want to get something basic some solid numbers so i find that the best thing to do is going to do two assemblers that'll be a five six and a three for the smelters and all that for constructors and smelters and give us some solid numbers, making it nice and easy. I'm trying to go for nice, easy numbers when building this kind of stuff. So with that being said, let's take a look at what that looks like. And I got a setup over here. Let me just... So this is the primary setup for what we got going on for the basic recipe. In comes the iron ore. Yes, easy peasy. Splits off into the three smelters. Each smelter is then split off into two constructors. And each one of these constructors, these six in the middle, are all making iron rods which is pretty easy and pretty straightforward nothing too bad then as you can see over here I have everything set up and ready to go so what we got going on here this one's actually kind of important this one makes 15 iron rods per minute this also makes 15 iron rods per minute but the end thing over here making our lovely rotors needs 20 rods per minute so the easiest way to do this is 15 divided by 3 is 5. So if we divide this by 3, take that 5 and put it over here with this 15, we make 20 and we send it all the way down to the end. Easy peasy. And we do that on the other side because we have 2. Then everything else gets merged in the center. So that is a 15 and a 15 and then 10 and 10. So that's 30, 40, 50, 50 divided by five. Now this is a cool little setup when you're dividing by five. What you have is you have a merger here in the front and then it goes to a splitter and the splitter goes out here and it goes out here. So one's up, what ends up happening is one, two, three gets split off in here. One, two, three gets split off in here, but this third one gets put back into the system. So basically it's splitting it six evenly, but the sixth one goes back into the system. Thus, giving you a five split that's nice and compact. Each one of these makes screws. Then the screws basically get merged together. First, this middle one gets split. Then they get merged over here and into the system. Easy peasy. Let's see it at work. looks amazing not to mention it's OCD friendly and it is a hundred percent efficient so it's running really solid really good and I do love it but unfortunately there's got to be a better way to design this right I mean look at this it's so one-dimensional well take a look at this puppy over here 16 core processor, 12 gigs of RAM, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sorry. So this lovely little beast of a machine over here is that, but a more compact version, as well as a more awesome version. I mean, look at this thing. All right, now there's a couple caveats of which we're going to change when moving it over here when I show you the little tutorial. Not to mention, I did add stuff like this in here, 
but I know some people don't have that kind of stuff, so we're not going to add it into the final product. I just wanted to show you some of the little extra things that you could add to it to kind of make it look even cooler if you wanted to spend the tickets right off at the beginning. But some people don't, and you know, that's okay. There's no problem. But it is going to look like it floats. Now this is a little bit more difficult than doing that one over there, but I will walk you through the steps easy peasy. So as you can see over here, I have everything set out ready to go. So we have a one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have a five by eleven setup going over right here. And as you can see, I do have this in the beginning, but we might be able to get rid of that. Let's see. So the first thing you want to build is you want to build this at the very end, a solid one, and then this nice little like one meter one. Then you're going to take that one meter one and you're going to basically go all the way down. So now we filled in the intersections right here. We have this one, these four in the middle, and then one at the beginning and the rest of them are open. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I know you thought the first thing is going to be these lovely smelters over here or maybe even these lovely assemblers, but no, no, no. We need to actually start with the grand old babies, the constructors, and there's a reason for that, and you'll see in just a second. So if you go into your production and you go down to your constructors under manufacturing part, you wanna aim this one right off the edge. Now you just wanna see, see how the feeties are just sticking off there? That's how far you wanna go. Then you wanna build the ones going there at the same way but make sure that all the orange is facing inward. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then you're gonna go on the other side and you're gonna build another five. Always making sure that the orange is set for the inside. This gives us 11 constructors face in the middle. Now, if you also go into the logistics, go over to a conveyor belt mark one, you wanna make a conveyor belt for each and every one of them. So basically there, and it's gonna be facing inward like that. So it's basically gonna go underneath it. And there we go, that is looking fantastic. Now we need to build the smelters. Now first thing we need to do is we need to build this over here because we are gonna to have to extend out on the smelters. So let's take a merger, because this is gonna be our end result. And we're gonna put the merger right like so right here i think there's a good spot now let's go back into our production all right let's go over to the smelters and we're going to aim this perfectly now see here's the only problem i want this to be just one more up actually two more up so let's go and delete that let's go into our smelter put our smelter right here boom and then we're gonna go back under logistics bear merger we're gonna put a merger right here in the front we're gonna aim it forward there we go We're gonna go over in our production, we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab a smelter this time, and we're gonna put this right in the center, and then we're gonna put it back right here. Because we need room up here for the nice little merger. Now, go into organization, or go under logistics, go down, get merger, and aim it having the blue facing forward, and there we go. Just to make sure it works, we're gonna go with this and we're gonna put that down and there we go. Go under the logistics, conveyor belt mark one, straight across, conveyor belt mark one, straight across, and conveyor belt mark one, straight across. Set each one of these to iron ingots. And then we'll put a splitter at the beginning and the splitter will also have these all set to conveyor belt mark one. Now what's going to happen is all three of these smelters are going to come in and they're going to merge in and it's going to be a solid 90 line. So you're going to need a conveyor belt mark two, bring that down and have that go behind it. Then what you want to do is underneath you're going to have a splitter. So even though it's a little claustrophobic down here, I apologize guys, you're going to have a splitter 
and put this just right in the middle right here. And this is gonna split it. And then you want a splitter that's going to split this into three. Now the best way I find to do this is just to basically wait until it's aimed up and right there where it's basically just touching it. And the same thing on the other side, going the other way. Then what you do is you connect the conveyor belt mark one, conveyor belt mark one, and conveyor belt mark one. Then have this as conveyor belt mark one. Oh, oh, I hit the wrong edge. Wait, where is it go? What is it doing? It went crazy on me. So conveyor belt mark one on all of these. Then all you need is a conveyor belt mark two to go into the splitter and a conveyor belt mark one to basically go into here. Now the best way I found to do this is go conveyor belt mark one on this, come down, wait until it's perfectly like that, then go up one, two, and it'll be a perfect 90 degree split. Same thing on this side. Once you get to there, go back one, two. Perfect 90 degree split. So questions, what does this do? So you're gonna set all these to iron rods, 15 per minute, and it'll produce 15 rods per minute. So you're gonna set all six of these to iron rods. These are the ones that you're gonna need for the entire system. Now we're gonna have to divide all the iron rods for the end of the system as well, but for the first part, we've done a perfect job. So now everything comes in, goes down, gets split, and takes care of these six lovely little constructors. Next up, we gotta deal with these five constructors making screws. Now the first thing you can do is you can set all of them up to the screw recipe. So they're gonna need 10 rods per minute. And as we know, we'll have an extra 50 rods left over that are gonna be needed to go into this and split off into five. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to do the screws. Now I got rid of the pillars that were underneath here to do a different design that I feel works just as great, but you can actually play with it and see what you like best. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a merger and put a merger over here, have the green facing back over. And if I could get that in the right spot, that'd be great. And then another one right here. And let me get rid of this one and build it right in the center. Sorry, OCD, it needs to be OCD. Otherwise, there's no point in all of this. Then you go through and you take a splitter and see how the orange and the green match up. There you go, have it right here. And then you have one going this way with the orange facing inward. Then you have the other one facing that way, but you have the orange facing over here. And I'll show you how this works. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a conveyor belt mark one, hook it up from this one to here, then this one to here, then this comes over here, bam. This one, on the other hand, this middle part gets put over to here. And then this gets brought back over to this merger. So this is going to be the sixth one that comes all the way around and gets merged back in. Now, all we have to do is connect these two. So this one over here. This is a nice pretty one. So we go like here, back two. And merge over. Oh, that looks good. I like that. I like that. Then we go on this side, and the reason we have this one in the middle like this is we have this, so we can have it connected in here. Boom, look at that. Oh my God, look at that slim pickings right there. Ooh, that's so good. And then the same thing, this one comes over here, and then this one comes over, go here, back two, and that's together. Perfect. So the first thing you need over here is you're going to need a splitter for in front of this one. And you got to make sure it's orange right there. And you get it pretty close, making it look pretty good. And just to test that that works, conveyor belt mark one, and it connects. So that's good. Then you take a merger and you want to put a merger next to this one right there and a merger next to this one right here with both. So now we have all green arrows facing forward. 
All right, now to separate the iron rods that we need, first you want to go over and get a conveyor belt mark one. You have that, and you're going to have this one facing out. Facing out and facing out. Then you want to go back into logistics, grab your conveyor splitter, have this one right here in the middle. Then go back down, grab a merger, and have the green facing to the left, and have the green facing to the right. Then you're going to get a conveyor belt mark one, connect that one, connect that one, and connect that one. And do a straight line across, but the final bit of the puzzle is you're going to have this one going over here, so this gets double the sub. Then switch over to a conveyor belt mark two, go over, and then this is going to go over here, and then that's how we have this connected right there. So what you want to do is you want to have it basically be brought over so it's perfectly lined up for both of them. Go back two, and that'll give you a perfect 90 degree going across there. Like that. All right. All right. Now the next thing is we need to have these being merged together to go into there. So easiest way to do that. We're going to put two temporary things right here. All right, and then we're going to go in and we're going to grab the merger. And I want this pretty close. Put it right up to here. Now, if I did this correctly, so this should be conveyor belt mark one merged. Then this should be conveyor belt mark one merged. Oh, perfect like that. Now, to go from here to here, we're going to have to switch over to a conveyor belt mark two. Now, it should not let us go over here, and that's why we built this one over here. So we'll go back to barely on the edge and have it go over. Now, to make it look fun, get rid of this one, get rid of this one, and get rid of this right here. And it looks like it just holds it over pretty nice and easy. And we'll do that on the other side real quick. Next up, we're going to need to get some assemblers. Now, go into your production. Go over right next to the constructor, and we have the assembler. Now, the assembler, we're going to want to aim this thing perfectly over here. We're going to put it right here, and then this one right here. As you can see, that blue line is lined up perfectly to go in there, and that's going to be good because we're going to need the conveyor belt mark 2 for a 100 screws going in. Easy peasy. Now, the rest of it, all the stuff that's coming out here, that is going to be all that stuff that we had down there with the iron rods. So we're going to need to bring that over. With that done, now what you can do is you can take this conveyor belt and do a conveyor belt lift mark one going across. Go in and grab a stackable conveyor pole. Find a spot, hit two. And find a spot right in the middle right here and hit two. And what you should be able to do with the conveyor belt mark one, conveyor belt mark one, is that'll be nice and even going across. Then we'll have another one, nice and even going across. And then this, perfectly like that. And if you want to, you can get rid of the conveyor poles. Like, if you want to get rid of this conveyor pole and just have the long belt like that, no one will know the difference. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go, and get rid of this one. Sorry that we had to change up the sides on here, but it just looks better like that and works better like that. I tried the other one where it's a little bit higher and I don't know, I just like this one a little bit better. Now, the best part for power is it's gonna be really easy because what you can do is take the power lines for this one. It's gonna go right here. And then you'll have a good spot going that way and a good spot going that way that takes care of all three. This one, go right in the middle of this. It's gonna go for those two, and then it's gonna go forward. And it's gonna do the same thing going across. She's gonna basically hook them all up underneath. Then we'll have this over here. Have this split into two. Each one takes care of one. And they merge into one. 
this takes care of that one and still has a way to go out. Then we will stay out here. This right here still has another power line. Do we connect it? Can it fit? Yes. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to switch over these to rotors. Basic recipe. I have all the recipes. All right. And voila. Now all we got to do is just basically take it and make sure it works. And we just set this off and make sure everything works just fine. But other than that, that is our going to be a nice little banana boat for rotors. Look at that. Doesn't that look well? And as I promised that I have something for you advanced players. So for your advanced players out there, I just wanted to show you for the alternate recipe. Uh, we have two alternate recipes, copper rotors as well as steel rotors. Steel rotors have steel pipes and wire, while the copper rotors have copper sheets and screws. So I wanted to figure out which one would actually have more. So I went through and uh, this is my nice, uh, lovely uh, little setup that I have over here where I have all the different ingots set up, every advanced recipe all the basic items, all the basic top tier items, all that kind of stuff. And then I went through and I picked and choose which I thought would have the best, you know, bang for your buck and all that kind of stuff. So we went with the steel rotors, which produce five per minute. And then we have the copper rotors, which produce 100 or 11.2 nah, per minute. So if we take out our calculator, all right, so we'll take 100 and we're going to divide that by 11.2. That's going to get us eight. 0.93 we'll say so 8.93 boom so that'll give us 100 then obviously this is going to be 20 okay so let's see what we got going on here so if you choose the steel rotor basically making steel pipe fused wire pure caterium uh, solid steel ingots pure copper ingots and pure iron ingots uh, you're going to be using about a hundred iron ore 32 copper ore 200 coal ore and about 122.9 water per minute. Now, let's compare that to the copper one. That's gonna use way less iron, but more copper. So if you have more copper available, then this is the way to go. Um, it does use a lot less coal, which is a very rare resource sometimes, but uses a lot more water. So obviously the copper rotor one would be the one to use more than anything else because water is so abundant everywhere so it really doesn't matter you're saving on coal and yes you're using more copper than iron but well let's face it you can change one of these things up and probably you know switch that up if you had to but overall still not that bad but if you don't have all that kind of stuff, you can always use this one, but I do recommend the copper rotor as your rotor replacement for the least amount of items. But anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, actually, if you are subscribed, thank you very much for being a subscriber, supporting the channel. That does mean a lot. You guys are the best. We have a very good community. Everybody's been very respectful and very helpful, and I do love that, especially in the Discord. If you wanna join the Discord, we almost reached 300 uh, you can ask questions and all that good stuff if you need some questions on something that's going on or you just want to chat we're all welcome to talk in there but anyway that's going to be it for today guys and next thing up is going to be modular frames for this series but anyway i'm drawing chaos and that's it bye